is the goal not marriage? Why is the goal? Let me have a baby by him. Let me have a baby by him. Because it's just dumb. Yeah. No, because they no the baby by him is because they want to be connected to the forever. The baby they by him be is connected. because y'all can't stop saying. I love, and neither woman could could. <laughs> when they say I'm about to come. The story be when you not say, me. I'ma uh, tell you. Uh, me, uh, uh, come. Uh, Hell yeah. Fill me up, nigga. Fill me up. Uh, 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 uh. There's really something. There's something. Uh, uh, uh. I think you're cool. I think you're cool. You got jeans on. Uh, I, can't, I can't do this. I thought we was. We still, we I had to stop saying. Me and say come for me, and it's still. Hold on, that's that, that's 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 stop. Y'all gotta stop. Y'all got, got. Hold on, let me tell you something. I'm about to so stop. Better, <laughs> wait, wait, is <laughs> worse better? Four, is no, worse better? Four, yeah. four, no. four, four is overstimulate. Four Yo, is if you bust right there, <laughs> if you say was, come for me. Your plan is backwards. Oh, your shit. <laughs> I mean, listen, damn. That's a situation that a lot of guys find themselves in. And the reality is you gotta make that decision based on are you in it just for that short term moment of pleasure, which yeah, it's good. Or are you thinking beyond that as far as what's gonna come with that responsibility if you go through with it? And it's something that you have to make up in your mind beforehand. You know, because if you go into it saying you're just gonna figure it out or you'll wait till you get into a situation like that to have an answer, nah, you're gonna, you're gonna fail that test every time. You gotta put it in your head from, from the jump like, nah, I'm, I'm not doing that. You pulling out and you running out the pocket, you scrambling. You ain't staying in there trying to, you know, drill it down the middle. You pulling out the pocket fast. Lamar Jackson. Because really, if you don't, nine months later, <laughs> you're gonna be sitting there saying my baby mama tripping. <laughs> Real quick, merch store is live right now. It's officially live. If you go to the website right now, down in the description, you'll see it's live. You guys can go ahead and cop the shirt. You see I got it on right now with the masculinity shirt, as well as the others that you'll find right now in the merch store. As always, you know, I appreciate you guys for supporting the channel. Anyway, let's get to it. Calling me, we're broken up. What am I supposed to think from that if now you're calling me wondering where I'm at when you did the breaking up? Okay, so I feel like if we're in a long-term, loving, committed relationship and we break up, um, the first thing you do shouldn't be to run to the arms of another woman. If your heart is with me and you respect me, at least give me the courtesy of giving it some time because uh, if we break up, you're right. Can, can we work through it? Will we get back together? Nah, that ain't the way it work. You should give yourself time to heal, definitely. I think it's dangerous sometimes you have people who jump in and out of relationship. They finish, you know, a relationship and then they want to get right back out there and start, you know, seeing other people in whatever level. Some people don't give themselves enough time to actually heal and deal with the emotions and deal with what they went through. They use other people who they're getting to know, new people to kind of be that band-aid over what they're going through. Without actually really dealing with the situation and really dealing with how they truly feel and, and actually attacking it head on. So that way they can be better for it and, and be better in the next situation. But, it, but that's the most important thing, making sure that you take time to heal, not worry about what your ex wants or is worried about when they're the ones who broke up with you. That's crazy. Over the weekend, I told someone that I was talking to, but for only a week, so maybe that's where I went wrong. I don't know, that I was HIV positive. This is the first person that I've ever told that I'm actually talking to that, you know, saw something with. Basically, he blocked me. I've been like really down about it because it's like, it's nothing that I did. And like, he's just not like giving me a shot and kind of sucks because I've never been in this kind of position, you know? I've never felt this kind of rejection before in my life, but I'm so happy and I'm so proud of myself because I did tell him and I wasn't ashamed when I told him. I was like very matter of factly when I told him and that's like really big for me because I'm finally like embracing and getting confidence in this new journey that I'm on. Our hope is not lost. <laughs> I know I'm gonna be happy 
with someone i'm happy now and i know someone's gonna understand me and love me for who i am can't deal situation would be like damn you know this shit is scary but if you're telling me that i'm not at risk and that you're healthy i'm willing to do the research that i need to do to see if we can make this work this was my first experience telling someone <laughs> it sucks oh i mean damn so this woman had to tell a guy she was talking to not for a long time but still talking to that she uh she got hiv she got that magic johnson hiv isn't the the death sentence that it used to be as far as you know in the 90s and everything because of you know medicine and technology and things of that nature and obviously it's not aids uh, understanding the difference between the two and how aids is the more serious of the two but still nonetheless for a lot of men out there they find out the woman that they're talking to they're attracted to and you know see a future where they may like to be sexually intimate with that woman and they find out that she is contracted a sexually transmitted disease that cannot be cured at least right now i'm not going to begin to even imagine what that may feel like emotionally to have to share that with somebody that you are developing feelings for as far as things go because you know you 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 start to see a future with that person or maybe hope you can see a future with that person but you know you got to disclose this information to them that obviously is going to make or break that opportunity you have to get to know them. I mean, it is what it is when you see situations like that. It doesn't sound like she was really mad or upset or, you know, had a problem with him. It sounds more like she just is upset because she has to go through the situation. And obviously, you know, she had some interest in this man and it didn't work out. But you can't really blame anybody. You know, you can't blame someone for not wanting to make that a part of their life. That's a huge ask for you to expect from someone. And you got to be hoping that person who you're talking to sees you as one hell of a person that they want to be with. You know how they talk about is the risk worth the reward? It's not going to be a lot of people who, who believe their health is worth the risk for the reward, even with all the education and the knowledge and everything that they can learn as far as how they're going to be safe. For most people, that's just too much for them to undertake and be comfortable with even if they have all the information that's telling them otherwise that they'll be safe. The risk won't be worth the reward. Hi, my name is Bianca and I'm HIV positive. So I'm gonna try to answer your two questions as quickly as possible. Starting off, am I communicating this off the cuff? No. The thing with disclosure is that it is a personal choice. I do not have to share with you if I don't want to. So when it comes to HIV disclosure, you wanna ask yourself four questions. Who am I disclosing to? Why am I disclosing? What am I disclosing? Everyone doesn't need to know everything. And where am I disclosing? If I'm gonna tell someone that I'm HIV positive, I have to feel like I can trust that you're gonna hold space for what I'm saying. And on top of that, I need to make sure that I'm gonna be safe. The truth of the matter is, is that your health is not my responsibility. And the way that you perceive me is not my responsibility either. If that bothers you so much, you should not be having casual sex nor engaging in hookup culture. Because the likelihood of someone disclosing while engaging in casual sex is very low. So I know when you first hear that, it might be easy to feel a little bit triggered to say she should be telling, you know, the men she's talking to, you know, her health as far as things going, not leading them on you know without telling that type of information yeah i can get that also but it's all the more reason why you don't need to be going out here raw dog jamal in it Th that's exactly why i'll tell you before i was married obviously when i was younger in my 20s but i mean besides not wanting to have children this was another thing that kept me from being overly active with so many women and when i was being in a position where i was just reckless using no protection Cause I've thought about stuff like this. I'm like, man, you don't know what this person might have. You don't know how safe they're being. Like, at least you can do is make sure you wrap it up so that when you have no kids and you could protect yourself, and give yourself the best shot of protecting yourself. And I think too many times, man, listen, people lose track of that perspective in the heat of the moment because they want to have a good time. Because listen, let's take it away from this situation. Your health isn't that person you decide to hook up with and be sexually active with specifically you're you're choosing to hook up and it's not even somebody you're in a committed relationship with you choose to get into a committed relationship you guys are choosing to say okay we're going to be exclusive to each other sexually you know you you may choose to go get tested and make sure you both are you know are clean or you you guys may just say we're no longer going to entertain sex, sexual activity with anybody outside of this relationship that we're creating amongst the two of us you can choose to do that and when you choose to participate and go out here and sleep with random women that you're just getting to know and you don't even know well enough to know if that's something she may have, 
you are taking that chance. And I know for a fact, that's just something that not enough people truly think about because it's something that doesn't get talked about until it hits home and it happens to someone close to you or it happens to you yourself. Hello, my name is Bianca and I'm HIV positive. So while the purpose of this person's question was to degrade me, I feel compelled to be honest about it. The truth is, is that yes, I was being promiscuous and I contracted HIV at 27. So yes, it was unprotected intercourse. At that time, I was extremely broken, extremely traumatized. I felt unworthy. I didn't love myself. I felt unlovable. And I thought that if someone wanted to sleep with me, especially unprotected, that meant that they loved me, that I was worthy. Obviously, I know that that's not true now, but at the time I held on to that as if it was truth not knowing that my worth is found in Jesus Christ alone. So whether you're promiscuous or not, saving your bodies for your husband alone is the best option. This is not to say that spouses don't transmit, however, the risk is much lower. I am not ashamed of my past nor of my diagnosis because Jesus has set me free. There are a lot of broken people out there, a lot of broken women and a lot of broken men, a lot of broken men who think that the masculinity is defined by how many women they sleep with, how many bodies you got. You hang around enough men long enough, you heard that type of language, those type of conversations before. You know, I stopped counting after I slept with X amount of women. You know, I, I, it's easy for me, that type of thing. But there are those men who believe their masculinity comes from how many women they can sleep with. There are women out here that some reason, whatever is screw is loose, who think that if a man simply sleeps with them, that is the equation of him really caring about her. Despite all the countless history, past examples, countless evidence and facts you could draw up and show them the results of women in the past going down that same path ending horribly you'll see women play that same record oh he loves me oh he really cares about me he won't do me like that all the same things you always hear constantly over and over and over again but somehow women you know they still fall for it it's always after the fact where the realization of how crazy and idiotic they were for that is in many cases it takes some form of tragedy something that forced them to see things differently you had a kid by the man and the man walked out on him and didn't want to take care of the baby or even worse like this situation you get, end up getting a sexually transmitted disease that you have to end up living with it for the entirety of your life but anyway guys let me know what you guys think about this whole situation as far as where you stand on this appreciate you guys take the time to tune in don't forget you support the channel by hitting that like and that subscribe button and as always until next time